Hi and welcome. This video is number 9 in a series of short videos detailing the use of MasterFrame and MasterFrame Pro. In this video we're going to be looking at the various viewing and navigation options in MasterFrame, which will allow you to segregate components of your structure to work on your structure more easily. First of all, we're going to have a look at panning, orbiting and zoom in and out options using our mouse. Panning is simply carried out by clicking the middle mouse button, otherwise known as the scroll button, we and dragging to pan the structure in any direction. For the orbit function, we combine the shift key on the keyboard with the middle mouse button down to revolve around the model. A horizontal movement revolves around the vertical axis and a vertical movement revolves about the horizontal axis of the structure. To zoom in and out of the structure, this is done using the scroll wheel. Focusing on the point at which the mouse cursor is located, we use scroll up to zoom in and scroll down to zoom out. The center of the view is represented by a crosshair shown on the structure, which is shown when we pan or rotate within the model, and its location is usually set center of the screen when panning. In this manner, we only have some control over where this crosshair is located. We can set the center of rotation explicitly at a node or a center point of member at which we're interested in by using the shift key on the keyboard along with the left mouse button. This function is particularly useful on a busy 3D structure. In addition to the mouse navigation viewing options, we also have the navigation cube on the top left of the modeling interface, which is used to quickly jump between key standard and isometric viewing orientations by clicking on its faces, edges, or vertices. For example, front view, right view, top view, and 3D isometric view. The changing of the viewing orientation does not change the level of zoom or extents of the frame. To allow the structure to fill the available screen space, we can use zoom extents within the filter dropdown. The filter tool allows you to view subcomponents or smaller set of members on the screen. The filter tool is often best used in one of the principal views of front, side, or plan view. When in plan view, Using the filter tool to zoom to the section of the frame between grid lines A and B and 1 and 2, we can simply click and drag to draw a window around this section of the frame. The entire member must be enclosed in the window for it to be included in the filtered view, unlike major CAD programs where the direction of the selection influences what is selected. Placing the frame back on an isometric view using the navigation cube shows us that we have indeed included all the members and all the levels of the structure that we sliced into. To return back to the full frame, we can either use the home icon to the upper left of the navigation cube, or we can select full frame under the frame views dropdown to restore the graphics view to an isometric 3D view, recentered on the model and showing all members. The name frame views feature many views that are automatically generated from basic elevations, levels and grid lines, which have been defined in your structure, and in addition, views of any part of the structure can be created. For example, plan at level 1 shows us the subset of members that are located on this floor plan level. If we put the frame back in a symmetric view, we can see that only the members at this level are included. A very useful feature when dealing with just a subset of members is the reveal frame option within the filter dropdown, which shows us a wireframe of the rest of the model in order to easily see the current members relative to the full structure. We can filter through all the various grid lines which have been set up within the structure from which these views have been automatically generated. In addition to the automatically generated named views, you can also quickly and easily create your own named views using the Edit Frame Views option within the Frame Views dropdown, or by going to the Viewing menu and selecting Frame Views. This displays the Multi View Setter, which is the editing environment for all the frame views. The automatically generated frame views are included in this list, however. The program will automatically take care of their generation and alteration should the structure or the location of levels or grid lines change. To create a new view, simply click on the Add New View button, then type in the name of the view. And just like we would using the filter tool, we can simply draw a window around the part of the frame we want to create a new view for. If we place the structure on the plan view and draw the same window we drew earlier for grid line A to B and 1 to 2, this automatically determines the range of the view. We can also instruct the program as to what the key orientation of this view should be, and in this instance we'll keep it on the isometric view. Saying OK to this, and now going back to the full frame menu, we can see the new user-defined name view now in this list. Choosing this new view now shows us the subset of the frame that was included in the frame view, then Reveal Frame will let us see this relative to the rest of the structure. 
Further filtering options can be obtained through the Member Viewing Groups under the Viewing menu. Member Viewing Groups have a distinct advantage over named frame views in that they can include a selection of members, whereas the named frame views simply work with all objects that are included within a set range. Into Member Viewing Groups we can simply give the group a name, for example Flat Roof Beams, and then select the members that we wish to include within this group. To create additional Member Viewing Groups, we can simply click Add New. And now type in the name of the additional group and select the objects that we wish to include in this group. To filter the content of the view, we need to access the viewing options which is accessible by selecting the View Filters icon next to the Frame Views on the top toolbar within the Views and Filtering tab. Checking the box for Member Viewing Group, we can see that we have groups for the two member viewing groups we have just created. As you can see, this allows us to filter to a subset of the frame in a way that you would not otherwise be able to do using a named view. Furthermore, the member viewing groups can be used in a variety of ways. We can say that we want to invert the viewing of the group by using the hide option. We can say that we'd like to implement more than one group by using the multi-select. To turn off all member viewing group options, we can uncheck the parent member viewing group option. Now that we are in the filtering options, we can check out some of the other filters that are available to us beyond the member viewing groups that we have just created. We can also filter the structure on orientation, materials and section sizes, as well as some other viewing settings. For example, within the materials filter, we can see that we have the option to filter the view of the structure to steel, concrete, composite timber, bracing members, or non-structural dummy members. Selecting the parent option to filter by material allows us to choose the various materials. Going through the options, we can see our steel members already, and likewise the filter would isolate our concrete, composite and timber members if they were present within the frame. In this case, we also have some bracing members. We also have the option to choose multi-select, where we have structures of many multiple material types. Similarly to the member viewing groups, we can see that we can hide the selected groups, which will invert the view of those options selected. Orientation filtering allows us to filter according to the orientation of the members. We can filter to horizontal, and then within that, we can say we would like the members that go in an east to west, or a north to south direction, or we can say vertical members, or inclined members. Again, multi-select allows us to combine various orientation filtering options. Snapshots are quite similar to frame views, in that they are both related to preset views of the model. However, snapshots can be more powerful than frame views, as they capture all the settings of the top bar and allow you to recreate views with further graphical parameters defined. In comparison, frame views focus on displaying a range of members within a specified space defined by X, Y, and Z coordinate ranges, rather than any of the predefined graphical settings from the top bar. To manually add a snapshot, we can set our view and graphical parameters, let's say first floor steel on an isometric 3D view, colored by section with a section key. Click the snapshot button from the views and filtering category of the top bar. Provide a name for the snapshot, then click OK to add the snapshot. Let's add another snapshot of the previous subset of the frame we previously created. We can also generate snapshots from our existing frame views, using your current graphical settings for each snapshot. We can then navigate our snapshots by going into the drop-down button under the snapshot button within Go to Snapshot, and using the previous and next buttons to navigate the available snapshots. We can also edit a snapshot within the same drop-down menu by going into the snapshot view, editing or changing our settings, and clicking on Update. Within here, we can also delete snapshots and sync snapshots based on any changes we might have made to our frame views, either syncing individually or syncing all. As you'll see, as you work through these tutorials, having a firm grasp of the structure content filtering options will serve you very well in the continuing creation, modifying, editing and design of your structure.